Okay, so welcome along to another short video, just a bit of an update on the project. I am still working on it, um, just waiting on bits for the car still, still waiting on parts for the coilovers, but hopefully they should be here by the end of the month. Um, I apologise about the wind, but yeah, it's really windy today. Um, another addition to the project is underneath that cover, um, so let's pull the cover off and see what we've got. straps on the uh, cover. I'm sure the wind's going to help me take it off today. Okay, so the wind's half taking the cover off. Um, but yeah. Yeah, there doesn't look a lot there. I mean, the subframe that's in, I'm just mocking some bits up, just trying something different. Uh, trying to get the E60 subframe in there. Uh, I don't know if that's going to work or not yet, but time will tell. Um, I mean, yeah. What this is, is... Let's undo the other strap. What this is, is an E30 M, E39 M5 body shell. Um, there's not a lot left of it yeah I'll admit to that um, but the plan is to sort of rebuild this from the silver car that you've seen in other previous videos I mean a big reason for using this shell is underneath you can run the uh, proper quad exhaust on this side with the battery being in the box in the middle um, and just so yeah with a, an E39 M5 with an S85 engine, that's sort of what the plan's always been. Um, but this was sort of the, the cheapest way to get into an M5 without buying a running car and then selling the engine off. I mean, yeah. There really isn't that much left of it. Uh, I mean, let's have a look in the boot. I mean, yeah. Boot lid's fucked. Sorry about that, um, just had someone interrupt me, but yeah, so yeah, there's not, there's not a lot left. Boot lid is just there to keep it watertight, but yeah, it's, yeah, not a lot left there. I mean, there's all the M5 sort of boot carpet floor, because I know that's all different to the normal E39, so I had that included in the shell. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's a big old job ahead to get it back up on the road, I mean, there's quite a lot of rust but they always go on this sort of rear panel there um, yeah it's just around that hole there that plug hole where they start to go the rest of it is fine but as soon as you got them them factory plug holes in there they just seem to water must get in sit there and then just rust from the edges and then rust up to the lip there um, I mean so yeah And then you've got rear arches, more rust once again. So, I mean, I think this whole panel will get replaced off a good one. Um, I mean, other than a bit of sort of surface rust here and there, everything seems all right. So all just wants cleaning up, treating, uh, probably put some epoxy primer on there and redo it. And then re-underseal it. I mean, yeah. Standard jacking points need doing. Um, subframe mounts look all right. A bit of fucking flaking surface rust on there, but nothing that's impregnated. Um, yeah, all these brackets just want cleaning up and treating. Um, the other side, rear arch-wise, is pretty much the same. Um, and then the other common place front edge of the sills I mean yeah they always sort of go there and um, yeah, it's just it's chopping off some new, new panel putting in um, the front jacking point same again they always go there it's just crushed up yeah. it's great BMW build quality there
but yeah there's a base there to start with but yeah it's going to take some serious work to get it back roadworthy again I mean for some reason someone's decided to wrap the roof in carbon fibre wrap don't ask me why you'd want to do that uh, yeah inside not a lot left I mean, uh, Stephen, who I got this car off, he's um, actually taken the running gear off this to make a M5 touring, so he's had to hack into the loom. So, yeah, a bit of wire and spaghetti there that needs all ripping out. I can transfer the loom off the other car. Um, but yeah, it's just, there's not a lot left. I've got the rear arch liners because they're M5 specific because they're cut up higher up the arch. Normally, E39 ones just follow the contour there, but these ones are a lot higher up there because the the arches up there, up there in the factory. Um, yeah, they're all tucked up there, so that's what that cutout's for to allow you to do that. Because normally, it's sort of hooking over the edge of the arch, but yeah, there's not a fat lot left, you could say, um, but. It's got potential to sort of get better. Um, I mean, yeah, a few other places I have noticed. There's these sort of grommet holes that they always do from the factory. They just seem to be such a massive water trap. I don't know if it's from where they get pressed, the panels get pressed, but yeah, I've noticed it on a few other cars before that these popping little grommets they just seem to water gets in the gap there so that's just like a rubber grommet water gets in and just corrodes so I don't know whether eventually that will get cut out and just delete the hole completely because there's no, there's no need for it really because it isn't a drain um, and then the same again with that one there that one's quite badly gone in there taking all sort of the factory paint and under seal off with it um, yeah they're just asking for trouble they are really so I think they'll all get removed plates in there or I've got the other shell in the shed so I can cut the panels out of there replate them in if them holes are good on the other one but if not I'll just plate them over get them gone get it seam sealed up and then yeah it's all it's all good to go but that's basically it I mean this loom yeah, it's, this loom's scrap. The only things I'm going to have to take out of it is stuff for the sunroof and the sunroof rye, which I think will go to the GM5 module, which is, I think it's a GM5 or just a body module that's in there, the white one, that one will work. That one just have the wires go into there. Um, I think it's obviously had a rain sensor as well on the windscreen, so I might take that with, you, with it uh, for auto wipers and stuff like that, so. Um, yeah, I'm going to sort of dissect this loom of what's left, what I haven't got on the other car, um, and move it over, and then swap the whole loom over, and then you're good to go again, and then I could start sort of doing the wiring for the S85 stuff then from there. Um, but at least it'll give me a sort of a fighting chance because this one's just yeah, it's been hacked up to get all the wiring out. I think for the heated seats by the way. So, yeah. It's not great, but it's got potential. I mean, the doors actually seem all right. Um, Rust-wise, I've seen them, there's a bit of shit on there that might come off, I don't know if it's overspray. Yeah, it looks like overspray. That'll just come off. But no, the doors on the bottom, other than that edge there, they actually look really quite good. I mean, normally they go on the bottom edge. No, yeah, it looks all right. Um, this door, actually a different colour so I think he sold the door off that before I got in touch with him um, but yeah so that's sort of it I'll just put the camera in here so you can uh, hear me a bit better but yeah I think I'm going to end the video there I mean yeah you can roughly see what I've got to work with now um, I mean it isn't going to be an easy task I get that it's the biggest sort of thing I've done but hopefully going to learn a lot more sort of fabrication, welding,
paintwork sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, engine bay is pretty simple. Uh, it's just the E60 subframe there on some plates and some G-clamps, just temporary offering stuff up, trying to do things a bit different from how I did it on the grey car, to work on it a bit better, but yeah. I'm glad I've got that grey car, because otherwise I'd be missing everything for here, in there, all the clips, everything like that. I mean, there's a few bits left. Spacer for the bonnet. But yeah. yeah. There's a lot to uh, a lot to go at. I mean, oh, one's ripping out I mean there's a wiper motor in there I think it's a bit far off needing that but it's still there every little helps um, so yeah I'll leave the video there hopefully I'll have some more updates soon um, but yeah just waiting on the coilover bits because till I've got the coilovers in there I can't really um, confirm all the subframe placement and stuff that stuff like that till I've measured the caster angle um, but yeah I'll leave it there and uh, take it easy I'll see you on the next one